Welcome to the Good Shepherd and the Child podcast, where we explore the spirituality of the Christian child through the method of the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd. I am your host, Carrie Mecki Lozano. Today, we have Claudia Margarita Schmidt back on the podcast as we are continuing this dive that we have been doing into Father Mangilo throughout the season of Lent. And so Father Mangilo gave a beautiful talk during the 1999 Concilio on the pedagogy of God and the pedagogy of the child. And so Claudia kind of lifts up some of that wisdom that he had for us. And I really hope that this aids you in your prayer life throughout this Holy Week and this beautiful tritium that we are about to enter into. Claudia has lived in many different countries throughout her life, including Italy, for the eight years that she lived in Rome studying and working with Gianna Gobi and Sofia Cavalletti. She is an international formation leader for the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd, and she has been a catechist for over 33 years. I hope you enjoy. Claudia, welcome back to the Good Shepherd and the Child podcast. Hello. How, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for joining me again. I always enjoy having you on because of your time that you spent in Italy and your stories that come with it. And I love sitting at your feet and learning from you because of how much you have learned from Sophia and Jana and Mangilo and all of those amazing people. So thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Oh, you're very welcome. It's nice to share my adventures with them. <laughs> well, so throughout Lent, we have been doing this series on Father Mangilo since he was a scholar of morality and greatly influenced the work that we do, the way that we look at morality in the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd. But you knew him personally, so I would love to hear from you, Claudia, of who was he? What do you remember about him? Oh, I don't remember exactly when I get to know, got to know him, but the great passion began when I began to study with him. Sophia sent me to the university to follow his lectures, and I did that for six years. And what I remember is he was like a big boy, you know. For example, we were studying the the Summa, and then suddenly he was bored about it. And he says, <laughs> oh, let's talk about the child. And then the students were like, what's wrong with him? What's wrong with him? <laughs> and that happened several times when he said, look out of the window, the nature, and this bird. And it was amazing how he could transform all this environment of the students into uh, wondering about something, from the Summa to this wondering for this joy. So I remember that very well. And in every year he had a theme. And the last year I remember was about the Beatitudes. Mm -hmm. And it was like when he talked, you say, oh, I understood everything. It was marvelous. And when you went home, you say, I didn't understand one word. <laughs> just like uh-huh but uh, no <laughs> and and Rita was talking about the the justice you know and when he came to the to the atrium where we had our meetings he said to Francesca and to me I forgot my papers so Francesca I took Sophia's car and Francesca and I went to San Angelicum and I drove like crazy, which was no problem because I grew up in South America. So I knew how to drive in Rome. <laughs> and we went there and got the papers and went back. And then he began his presentation. And it was so beautiful because he took the globe, you know, the Montessori globe. Right. And he showed Italy and he showed Africa. And he said... I want to serve Africa, but where is my social conscience first? Here in my environment, before I go to serve somewhere else. And this is what you call social justice. That's how we began this, this presentation. And I thought it was very beautiful. Like he got the Montessori globe, 
and he began to explain what social justice is. So he was always very, he took the things around him and used them for, for a presentation that was very beautiful. Mm -hmm. The more that I learn about him, the more I feel that him and Sophie and Jana, they really were very kindred spirits. It seems like they just understood each other. They just kind of saw the world and saw people and saw the childs in the same way. I love it that God pushed them together. Oh, it's wonderful, yeah. And when I hear Sophia talking, uh, I hear Monjilo talk or Jana. Yeah. It's the same language, like you say. Mm -hmm. And yeah, one time we were in Turkey with Francesca. Sophia and Jana were not there. And I remember, and I don't know where, it was nearby Ephesus, we did traveling with, there was a tractor and a trailer. And so we went on it, but uh, Monjilo was quite chubby. And so somebody had to pull him and somebody had to push him. <laughs> so I was the pusher. <laughs> so we had a lot of fun with that too. <laughs> so it was fun with him. He was beautiful. And in the Angelicum, there was a little garden. And we went there and he said, Claudia, look at this flower. It's one flower, but so many different pieces and so different views we can have on this flower. But this flower is a unity. Mm. Do you hear Sophia in these words? Yeah. So I have very beautiful memories on him. What would you say is one of the main things that he taught you? Humbleness, joy and humbleness. Mm. This wonderful, big intelligence, genius wise, and just humble like a child. Mm. You know, I remember when Sophia, uh, when we celebrate the 50 years of catechesis, he was so tender. Mm. And I don't know if you want to put the picture where I'm together with him. Mm hmm that we also are holding hands. So he always is a very tender person, and you see he's a child of God. And so that was the example, to have a lot of intellectual power, but to say, I'm nobody. Mm. I'm the servant of God, but I'm nobody. That's what he taught me. I wonder if he felt a kindred spirit with the child, and that's why he was so drawn to this work. Oh, yes. Mm. Yes. That's really beautiful. May we all be so humble and, and joyful. And he laughed about himself very a lot. He made jokes about himself. <laughs> so you were telling me about a talk that he gave. And it was 1999, right? At the Concilio in Italy. Is that yeah. correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where he spoke about the pedagogy of God and the pedagogy mm -hmm. of the child. And I would really love to hear more about what he taught at that concilio meeting to everybody. What does that even mean? Like, let's start with even the word pedagogy. Like that's, let's, what does the word pedagogy mean? Pedagogy is a very simple uh, definition. It is the science how to teach. Hmm. In the glossary of the book of uh, Sister Mary Michael Fox, right. she says that educational term is the art of science of teaching. And I won't go to the Greek and all that, but it's that's that, to lead the child. Right. The method of teaching. The method of teaching, yeah. 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 So then what, what does it mean? the pedagogy of God, the pedagogy of the child. What did Mangilo mm -hmm. tell you? He said the pedagogy of the child is a child wants love, right? He wants immediately response with love, with tenderness, with signs, with love. Mm -hmm. That's what God wants, right? That is what God wants to give. That's what a sacrament wants to give. And he explains that a child wants to play, and the liturgy is also a play. Now, 
here we can get confused with what is liturgy and what is playing. And a good friend of mine helped me out here mentioning Gordini. And Gordini talks about the liturgy as a play, uh, saying that there is two things which come together, the play of the child and the play of an artist. And the easiest way to say there is a holy joy before God. You know, there is no thought. You know, an artist goes and creates, not with their thoughts, not with limits, but with joy, with, do you know what I mean? It's not, it exists. Mm -hmm. An expression of like what's inside of them. Yes, yes. And simplicity to life. And they don't ask why and where and so on. So it's like a, like a dancing, you know? How can I explain? It's a, a rhythm. It is um, coming and going. It is not mm -hmm. just, when I later talk about morality, it's not just a form in a box, but it's something open, a relationship. Yeah. Does it make sense, Carrie? Yeah, so it's the pedagogy of God and the ped pedagogy of the child. It's what I feel like you're saying. It's like more of a an expression of what's inside of them rather than more um, standard teaching with question and answer. So it's more of an expression of relationship, an expression of feeling, an expression of existence, just like a state of being almost within that relationship. And I feel yeah. like you're saying that both God and the child, that's their natural state of being is just living in that, that relationship, living in those emotions, living in that expression of what's inside of them. Does, am I getting that yeah. at all? Yeah, yeah. And this pedagogy of God and this pedagogy of the child, they have, both of them bring joy together. Okay, they both together bring joy. And that brings a certain vision of life. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not something close. It's not something with definition, with something close, but it is something which has life. Which life does it have? A life of divinity. Mm. So it's all about relationship, but about an open relationship. It's a relationship that expresses that inner joy that you were just talking about. You know, I think that that's very different. I think a lot of us, when we think about the way we were taught about God, I don't know if many of us would actually say that God just manifests joy. And so what Mangelo is saying is that, yeah, he does. You know, we see that in the True Vine parable. He, he desires joy, complete joy. And it's so perfectly like anybody who has spent any time with children, especially the youngest child, they do. They also just manifest joy. Like it just, that's their draw in life is joy and love and relationship. And that's again the language. So, you know, when he wrote uh, to have a relationship with a person, mm -hmm. that article, yeah. right? Uh, that also yeah. this relationship to a person is also this closeness you can have to the catechesis to this person who is Jesus. And there again, you can hear the tenderness he says is this to give love, it's to be cuddled. I want to be cuddled. Mm -hmm. and also, the sacrament is a form of giving joy of being cuddled, you know? Mm -hmm. The sacrament is not only something that is a thing to do or a thing to make, a form which is close, which, no, it's a, it's a relationship of joy. I like that. The sacrament is like being cuddled. <laughs> it is the physical manifestation of the, the joy-filled relationship that God desires with us. I think that what Mungilo also brings with the morality, the sacrament morality, is to bring forward the, the relationship that there is no distance and that Sophia also 
talk very much. It shouldn't be a sterile relationship in the sacrament of right. reconciliation, for example. It should be a relationship. It should be a nourishment. It should be a call of your morality. It cannot be separated from from a relationship. And I think that happens many times that we put a sacrament on one part and the relationship on another part. Mm -hmm. And I think that Sophia and Jana and Mongilo were really working hard to see this relationship, which cannot be separated from the rational life and cannot be separated from the gestures. And when I talked about the to be cuddled, to be loved, and so on. Those are all gestures, which is the language of the person, of a, yeah, of the child of us. Mm -hmm. It cannot be separated. It's just a love story. The sacraments are a love story. Mm. And not always it's a former life. It is, of course. We have our boundaries. We have our laws. We have what we should do and what we have to do, but more as that we have to have a relationship, but a loving relationship. Because if we don't have that, where is the sense to do something? Right. And here I think that we have to have faith also uh, in the doctrine. And he many times um, mentioned also the, the catechism, which I think many people don't know. Hmm. Yeah, I feel like Mangilo does a beautiful job of teaching about how the sacraments are an expression of a relationship, how they are um, without the relationship, we, we've we lost the true meaning of what we are doing within each of the sacraments. Just like any other, like, again, going back to reconciliation, any relationship, like you have you and a close friend, right? And there's some kind of tiff that happens between you and the friend and you, a true good relationship, you would want to get back on good standing with them. And so when we lose the relationship side of the sacrament, we truly have lost all of its meaning. And so Mangilo does such a great job, especially like you said in that article, to enjoy a person of helping us go back to enjoying a person of being in rela true relationship um, and looking at that first and letting everything that we do, the sacraments, the liturgy, the gestures, our prayer life, be an expression of the relationship. He does such a great job of um, pulling us back to that core. And he was very wise also to, to use in his, in his, lectures now also for the university but also for us in the catechesis the, the encyclicas which came out you know what does it make at that time it was from John Paul the second the unum sint mm -hmm. what does it mean to be united united in what and then we have to think where do we want to be united it's, of course, it goes to economism, but I don't mean that part. I mean that part of ourself. From where is our unity? Where is our relationship? Mm. Again, we go back to the sacraments, and here are the sacraments, what, from the Catholic Church. So he he had the the link that he could always relate to the sacraments, and he did that with such a beauty I think pondering Mangilo's teaching on all of this fits so perfectly into this week as well as Holy Week as a great preparation for us as we begin the tritium because there's so much physical stimulation that's happening throughout the tritium. So, so many unique things in this culmination of our whole church year that's happening in these few days. And for us to just kind of sit with what Mangilu is constantly reminding us to remember first the relationship, first the person, and let every all of these things that we're doing during the tritium be 
an expression of that relationship be a an outpour of the relationship that we have. I think that this is just um, a great reminder as we're beginning into this so beautiful season. And since you say that, uh, Carrie, for Lent, Mojilo also said in, in the same lecture or same presentation, and I think that also fits to the Tridom, to this part, mm-hmm. is that Christ is true man. And he said, eat of me, drink of me, because God has made flesh. And he went there to the Eucharist, the sacrament of eternal covenant. Everybody is in this new eternal covenant. And he goes back to the celebration of the covenant, the fruit of nourishment, this nourishment of sacraments which comes to the resurrection, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a nice and beautiful way to go into this uh, Easter time, to be aware of this covenant, this eternal new covenant, that we are part of it in this new incarnation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that goes back to that unity that you were talking about this unity between us and God, but then also all of humanity and God, this this beautiful covenant relationship. Claudia, is there anything else that you would like to lift up about Mangilo or his teachings before we finish today? Yeah, that uh, we cannot have anything in fragments, that hmm. we have to give everything in totally, together, because it would be like a mosaic that... If one piece misses, the whole picture falls apart. And so we in our existence have to be one mosaic. Not one piece may miss in our spirituality. And I think that this was very beautiful what he said. And another gesture, I think, which was very beautiful, he said, is the family. Hmm. The family... um, the parents don't uh, educate one son or one daughter, but they educate the family. One daughter, one son, etc., etc. So he goes very together, that the family's together and they grow together. Hmm. So that also has to do with the mosaic, right? Families are mosaic, don't fall apart. Also, personally, don't fall apart. Mm. And that what you have, this what unity you have, you have to cultivate. Because it's given by God, and you have to cultivate it. It's a gift. So I thought that was very beautiful, what he said. And in the, and he says the woman has all creation in her womb. And not one little bit is missing. All creation is there. And even if the creation is forgotten, it will be always there. The creation is always there and will be always be remembered. And he talks about parousia, that parousia will always be there. Parousia is nobody will be left out. We're being educated for parousia because the parousia calls us. And I thought that was beautiful too. What he also talks about morality is cannot give fragments of humanity. It's not praise and goodbye. What he wants to say is also that morality is not a formal thing, like I said, but it's a friendship thing. We are friends with Jesus. We take hands on Jesus. We love Jesus. We give him our tenderness and he gives our tenderness and then we talk about morality so again all this tenderness comes out before we go to morality so I thought this is also very beautiful those are all very beautiful I feel like you could sit with each individual one of those for a while and really meditate on them that's very beautiful yeah Claudia, are you planning on going and 
Are you planning on participating in the 40th anniversary celebration in August? It would be in Slovakia because I would be every year there. Oh, wow. But yeah, that's my passion. Every year for the next seven years, I'm going there um, or more. But uh, we were talking about to do um, or a video or... Uh, to participate virtually, like have a watch party? Yeah. 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 Well, thank you, Claudia. Thank you so much for joining us again and and for talking with us and sharing with us all about Mangilo and his beautiful heart. We really appreciate you. You're welcome. Thank you all for listening to this week's episode of the Good Shepherd and the Child podcast. In our show notes, I have some links for you to enjoy some of Father Mangilo's articles that we have available. Some of them we have available free online. And if you have any of the old journals that you could read some of Father Mangilo's writings there as well. Don't forget that you can have access to the third edition of The Religious Potential of the Child on Audible. See our show notes for more information about that as well. This coming August, we have our 40th anniversary of the United States Association of the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd. We will be doing an event that will both be in person in Phoenix, Arizona, as well as live streamed. This is a CGS USA member event. Please check our website for more information about this event and registration will be opening soon. This podcast is sponsored by the United States Association of the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd. We would like to thank all of our members because you are making this podcast possible. If you would like to know more about the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd, or if you would like to become a member, please go to cgsusa.org. Thank you all for listening. We will see you in two weeks. Go and fall more deeply in love with God.